Should we baptize in the name of Jesus or in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost? Or does it really matter? How do we baptize? Coming on next on Scripture versus Scripture. I want to play it some such from them, and I want you all to see where they go off and where this problem comes around with this issue of having to be baptized in Jesus' name only or the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Charles, now I gotta fix this, Charles. I was watching you one Sunday morning. I gotta fix this because I did not put my picture up here. I wanna. I want to be able to talk through this. I want to kind of go through this with you guys. And so now this is, you know, he's talking about um, him watching something with Charles uh, Stanley and Charles Stanley was, was put on a demonstration about baptism. So let's listen. Let's even demonstrate it. You had some men in the baptismal pool of your church and they baptized and said in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now viewers, let's go to school. Who do you know named Father? Okay, okay, so, so there is the first the issue that he has. <laughs> he, he says, who do you know named Father? He's going to say, who do you know uh, named Father? He's misunderstanding what name actually means. Okay? The word name in Greek, and again, we're talking about from their understanding, from their standpoint, from their culture, the word name, it does also mean a person's name, nomenclature, but it also means reputation, what they do, what they're about. OK, uh, how do I know that? Because if we say if we want if we want to be that wooden with that interpretation, then when we say do something in my name, does that mean that we literally are saying his name every time we're doing something? OK, no, well, no. Uh, it means based on or according to or. Uh, because of the authority or based on the authority of Jesus, or in this case, when he's talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, so based on the authority or according to what they're doing. That's what it means. When we look at the Bible, Scripture is pretty plain. The name of Jesus is very important. Over and over again in Scripture, we read, in my name, in Jesus' name, or in his name. The devil were powerless because of his name. The demons were cast out in his name. Healing occurred in his name. Salvation comes in his name. We are justified in his name. As a matter of fact, everything we do or say is done in his name. Our most powerful weapon, which is prayer. Jesus said, ask anything in my name. But the question arises today, are we to baptize in Jesus name? Well, let's go to scripture and find out. In Matthew 28, 19, it reads as follows. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. It's pretty clear in Matthew 28, 19. And these are the instructions of Jesus himself before he goes back in heaven to be with the Father that we are to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. All right, so this is pretty plain here. Well, let's continue, and this is scripture versus scripture and see what the totality of scriptures have to say. Let's continue and see some more um, episodes of baptism. We're gonna go into the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. In Acts chapter two, verse 36, it reads as follows. Therefore, let all the house of Israel surely know that God had made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and the rest of, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right, so we see here that he says, every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Okay, so we have one says, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and the other one says, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's continue and see what more scriptures have to say. 
Let's continue on to Acts uh, chapter 8. We're going to start in verse 14. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Verse 16. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay. Again, we see uh, the apostles here baptizing people, and we see the same thing for they receiving the Holy Ghost with the baptism. And he said, they are here have not fallen upon none of them, you know, yet only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we, we see the, the theme here that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, let's go to Acts chapter 10, verse 46. All right. <clears throat> Now, in, in this uh, portion of scripture, we have some uh, Gentiles being baptized uh, and they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the, the gift of uh, they were speaking in, in tongues. And uh, um, the apostles here were trying to tell the Jews, see, that the Gentiles have also received the gift of God. They are also part of the God's family and uh, they need to be baptized. And so let's go on to scripture and see what the, uh, the scriptures say. Acts chapter 10, verse 46. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And, com and he commanded them to be baptized. How? In the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Okay, so now this uh, the evidence is mounting up. We so far have three incidents of being baptized in the name of Jesus or in the name of the Lord. The Lord, here is Jesus Christ, of course. All right. And uh, let, let's, let's go one more. We're going to do Acts chapter 19, verse 4. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. A little background here. John the Baptist had baptized some disciples. And then uh, they came to Paul and he was asking them about the baptism well, in a certain a certain way. We were about to read that. Uh, and, they, you know, they, 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 they told him they didn't know any baptism but Paul's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. He said, okay, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance, but the real baptism, what it was leading to, what it's pointing to is the baptism of the one that comes after him, which is Christ Jesus, the Savior. And when they heard this, they were baptized, how? In the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay. Now, we see that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus gave instructions and the apostles who heard these instructions, the apostles that sat at his feet, who, who listened to him for three years and were taught, they heard his instructions and we are to uh, believe, uh, I would believe anyway, that they followed his instructions. They understood his instructions, but they were baptized in the name of Jesus. When Jesus said baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they baptize in the name of Jesus. But what does it mean when it says that they baptize in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord? What does it mean by in Jesus' name? Well, the phrase in Jesus' name means by the will, power, and authority of. By the will, power, and authority of. Let's look at some scriptures and we're going to get <clears throat> a little bit better understanding by what it means when it says in the name of. Okay, uh, let's go to John chapter 5, verse 43. And this is very plain and simple. Jesus says here, I come in my father's name. OK, what does it mean? I come in the will, power and authority of my father. I come in the will, power and authority of my father. That's what it means when it says in his name. All right. Let's, let's look at Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Scripture, scripture, scripture. Luke 10, 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord. All right. Jesus sent 70. I sent out his 70 disciples. All right. Jesus sent them out and they come back happy. And he said, and the, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your will, power, and authority through thy name. All right. Jesus is Lord. All right. Over the devils, over principalities, over powers. So when the 70 came out and came back and they were casting out devils, they said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your will, power, and authority. Okay. It's pretty clear and evident here. We can go on. But okay. So it's true that in Jesus' name can mean in the will, power, and authority of. And we will look back at this baptism uh, 
Acts chapter 19, 4. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the will, power, and authority of the Lord Jesus. Baptized in his name. All right? <clears throat> now, is that all that in the name of means? In the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father? Let's see. What did the apostles understand it to mean? Well, how do we know what the apostles understood when they were given these instructions? What did they say? What words came out their mouth when they actually did something? All right. He said, do something in my name. Do something. I did this in my father's name. Well, what did the apostles understand it to mean? Acts chapter three, verse six. <clears throat> now follow along. Look at, look at this and, look, and, and, and let's not be denominational here or uh, what we were taught. Let scripture speak for itself. If this video has helped you in any way, please like, share, and subscribe. And please don't fail to hit me in the comment section back to the video. The question is, again, what did the apostles understand Jesus to mean? How do we know? What did the apostles do? What did they say? Does the Bible record what they said? Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. Now, let me back up a little bit. Uh, we're starting in six, and I'm going to back up and ver go to verse two. I want you to get all of this. I want this to be very clear what's going on here. All right. The healing of a, a lame man happens here in uh, chapter three, and we'll start in verse two. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered the temple. He was asking alms. He was asking for help, good deeds who seeing Peter and John about to go in the temple, asked in arms. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us, All right? Look, look at us, All right? He asked them for some help and, 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 and Peter said, look at us. And he having given heed unto them, he did, he looked at them, expecting to receive something of them. He's waiting for them to give him something. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let me back up here and say that again. Verse six. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Oh, okay. So we see here that Peter actually said in the name of Jesus Christ. But that's just one incident. We know one should be enough. Let's keep going with the Bible. Let's go to Acts chapter three, <clears throat> verse 16. <clears throat> Let's back, go down here a little bit. All right. And he's, 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 the, the guy's healed. He's running around and people seeing that this guy that's walking who, who was born lame. Okay. So, uh, people see him and then they, they asked him, how did this happen? Let's go to verse 16, three and 16. And his name through faith in his name have made this man strong who you see and know. Yea, the faith, which is by him have given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. All right. So they asked him, how did it happen? All right. <clears throat> right. And the apostles answered them and said, through his name, he's talking about the Christ. All right. Through his name and his name have made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him have given him perfect soundness. All right. He says, through his name. All right. Now we see what did they say? They said his name. When they told his man in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he said, through his name, faith in his name, belief in his name, you see this man perfectly sound and whole. So it gives you a little bit background, a little bit more emphasis on what made this man whole with the emphasis. Yes, it is the will, power, and ability of Jesus Christ, but they actually see it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let's, let's keep going. Uh, just a little bit. Let's go to Acts chapter 16 <clears throat> and see what Acts chapter 16 has to say. We're going to start in verse 16, all right? And it came to pass now, I always like to give a little background, uh, jump into these scriptures, I just want verse after verse, but I got to remember, everybody don't know what's going on here. Okay, uh, the, the apostles here are also uh, uh, are traveling the journey and they're going to run into a damsel here, a, a woman that had the power and the ability of di divination, the, the, the foresee, foretell things, all right? And so when they run into this man and she also had some masters, obviously she was a, a slave of these masters. This is the uh, um, portion of scripture we're going to start at in verse 16. All right. It says, and it came to pass when we went to 
prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain with soothsaying, much gain, right? The same followed Paul and me, excuse me, followed Paul and us and cried, saying, these men are the servants of the most high God, which show unto us the way of salvation. What she's saying is true. She just looked at them and knew that about them and started uh, proclaiming this true message. All right. This and this did she many days. Now she followed them around uh, crying out this message. These men are servants of the most high God who come to show us the way of salvation. These men are servants of the most high God who come to show us the way of salvation. You know, that gets irritating after a while, true or not. All right. All right. <clears throat> and she, this, she, this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name. Whoa. Paul turned and said to the spirit, I command thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he came out the same hour. What did he say? He said, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's, let's go further. Scripture, scripture, scripture alone. Right now, <clears throat> let's go to uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. <clears throat> it says, now we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. We command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, <clears throat> it's pretty clear here what's going on uh, with this teaching. All right, but I got one more, and this is very interesting to me. And we're gonna go back to the Book of Acts, uh, chapter nineteen. <clears throat> we just had uh, that incident. In Acts chapter 19, verse 4, and we talked about this uh, when we talked about John's baptism. Acts chapter 19, I'm going to back up to uh, verse 4 so you can see this again. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. All right, verse 5, and when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. All right, so we read this portion already. Now, again, when we uh, say these things, some people were trying to say, well, it just meant in the name of the, uh, uh, it just meant in the will, power, and ability of whoever name uh, this is talking about. They, they come as a representative of whoever name that we're talking about, all right? We, they come in the authority of whoever name we're talking about, okay? Now, we've we seen that they have, the apostles actually did say in the name of Jesus, but we have this incident where this is not clear. It said, you know, uh, believe on him, that is on Christ Jesus. Then they said they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. But we don't have clear understanding of what we actually said or do we? Let's go down to uh, verse 13, chapter 19, verse 13. And it says this. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits. All right, wait a minute. Then came certain vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus saying, we adjure you by the Jesus who Paul preaches. Now these exorcists, these Jews, they, they were there, they was observing Paul uh, uh, casting out spirits. They was observing the uh, apostles doing the whatever. And after they saw them do this, they were so impressed, they said, well, we want to do that too. So then they went to the people and they said, in the name of Jesus. Well, now why would they say in the name of Jesus? They say in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches. Why would they invoke the name of Jesus to try to cast these demons out, these exorcists, unless they, they watched Paul and the apostles do the very same thing? They was imitating what they saw. Okay? They said, well, in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's really that, that simple. When you see somebody do something and you want to do it too, you imitate what you just saw them do, do, uh, what they what they done, okay? And that's what, what happened here. It's clear in the Bible that not only the in the name of means and the power, will, and authority of, or the will, authority, and power of, it also means in this case, they actually meant in the name of Jesus. They said it in the name of Jesus. 
Is saying in the name of Jesus important? Apparently so. If you let scriptures uh, uh, tell us and, and foretell what it is. Now, we're going to go on further <clears throat> and talk a little bit about this uh, 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 this subject matter we're talking about here. We're talking about baptism in the name of Jesus. First of all, we, we, we was talking about baptism in the name of Jesus is necessary, but then we try to uh, show you what the, the does in the name of actually mean. So when they say in the name of Jesus, okay, not only the will, power, and authority of, it also means in this case, in the very name of, okay, Let's look at Philippians chapter two and see something that uh, God the Father did for Jesus Christ the Son, and uh, it's going to show and share more light. We're going to peel this like an onion, layer by layer. It's going to show more light about this issue within the name of. Okay, uh, Philippians chapter two. We're going to start reading in verse nine. Wherefore God also have highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. Wherefore God has highly that him is Jesus Christ. God the Father has highly exalted him, Jesus Christ. Why? What he did, what he accomplished here on earth, saving mankind, dying for mankind. It said, wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Now, wait a minute. <clears throat> How can you have a name above the name of God, above the name of the Father? He says, he's given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Can you actually have a name higher than the name of God? No, you can't. So what, what is God saying here? He says he gave him a name which is above every name and that every knee should bow at the name of Jesus of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Okay, well, the only way Jesus could have a name above every name if he shared the name of his father because his father's name was above every name. His father's above all. Jesus said that himself. Okay. Jesus said that in the Bible. He said, my father's above all. How can you have a name above the father's name? No, you can have your father's name. And a lot of people do. Okay. My father can be David. I can be David and my son can be David. All sharing the same name. Okay. Let's look further. Okay. Coming in the name of Jesus means both in the will and power and authority. And it literally means he shares his name. That's what we're getting at here. It literally means Jesus shares his father's name. OK, let's look at the Bible again. It says in the Bible, he says, I come in my father's name. OK, All right. Jesus says he comes in his father's name. Now, we take that to mean in the power, authority and will of which it does. But it literally means he came in his father's name. Also, it says later, he says that the, the father is going to what? Send the Holy Spirit in my name. Well, the Holy Spirit is going to come in Jesus name. Now, if Jesus came in the Father's name and the Holy Spirit came in Jesus' name and Jesus' name is Jesus and they all came in the same name. Amen. Now, look at this. Look at this. Let's go back to Matthew chapter uh, 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations and baptize them in the name. It doesn't say names. One name. One God, one name. Now, I understand that God is known by many names, but whatever name that is, they all share it at the same time. The members of the Godhead share the same name. Okay, I come in my father's name, the Holy Spirit come in my name. Okay, baptize in the name. And what did the apostles do? They baptized in the name of Jesus. Okay, if my father, which is David, told me, son, he's sick in his sick bed and he wanted me to cast a check, he said, son, go cast a check for me, all right, and cash it in my name. I'm not going to go to the bank teller and on that line where it says signature, I'm not going to put my name there. I'm going to put David, David Brown. OK. All right. Let's come and say now anybody who's not going to uh, go to this Trinitarian and, and, and modalist uh, argument and just reading scripture for, for what it says, understands that when you say uh, a name, it's a name. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> that's an argument against the Trinitarian position uh, uh, in, in this case, as far as the name of God. <clears throat> OK. The tr tr Trinitarians argue that the modalists uh have God as titles, the Father, God the Father. That's a title. It's a, it's a mold. You, you operate as a father, and you operate as this, and you operate as a son. You operate as a uh, whatever. Okay, and they'll tell you that then uh, for that argument that well, the, these are molds. These are not titles. I mean, these are not names. But then when Matthew twenty eight and nineteen comes around, you say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You know good and well that's not a name. There are molds. 
just like you said in the other illustration, all right? But he says baptize in the name of. Well, there's a revelation there. It's trying to tell you something, okay? <laughs> Jesus, the, the apostles looked at Jesus Christ and they said, show us the Father, all right? And Jesus Christ looked at them and he said, have you been so long with me? <laughs> you know, have you been so long with me and, and, and not realize? You know, he said, you see me, you seen the Father, okay? Now, now, again, now I want to make it clear at this point of this lesson, I'm not a modalist, all right? However, what I am trying to say is the three members, and I said members of the Godhead, and I said Godhead, all right, share the same name. They are three members of the Godhead, and they all share the same name, okay? You can have a father, senior, and you can have a junior, and you can have, you know, a son after that. Well, I guess it'll be the third. You get my point. David, David, and David. David sent David to represent David, in my case, <clears throat> if my name was David. All right. Now, let's keep talking. Now, uh, he is known by many names throughout the, uh, the, the time in the Bible. And let's give you an example. And when I say he, God, God is known by many names. But whatever the na that name is, what I'm trying to illustrate or emphasize is the Son and the Holy Spirit share that name. OK. In uh, Exodus, uh, the Father is known by I am. All right. Jesus came in the New Testament and said that he is the I am. All right. In the uh, book of Isaiah, the Father says, I am the first and the last. OK. In the book of Revelations, Jesus says, I am the first and I'm the last. Okay, he says the same thing that the father said about himself because they share the same identity as far as the same name. Okay, now <clears throat> I don't know how to make this any clearer than what the Bible uh, has already did, but I wanted to emphasize that the problem is for the most part of people understanding this concept, which is very simple, it's not even nothing supernatural. You see people every day name their sons the same thing they name their fathers and vice versa. So it's, it's, this is no issue. Uh, it's no issue at all. It, it's not even supernatural. A human can do this. Okay. So, uh, what I want to say is the problem is that the Trinitarians believe that to admit that God's name is Jesus is a side of modalism. And this is not the case. There can be one God and three members who share one name. Okay. Just like a father can be David, a son can be David, and his son can be David. And this is exactly what the Bible is going on in the Bible. Not only did Jesus come. In the will, power, and authority of his father, he came in his father's name, a name which is above all names. Now, I'm going to do another teaching a little bit later, and I'm going to be on the Trinitarianism and modalism. Matter of fact, my next list is going to be on that. I'm going to go further into this in the name of discussion and also where the uh, doctrinal uh, doctrinal disputes keep people from um, citing or admitting what the Bible clearly teaches about um the name of Jesus and, and about God and his nature. Before I close this uh, particular lesson, I'd like to give you some food for thought. If indeed, when Jesus commanded to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and it only means in the authority and power and will of, okay, and people say, well, the reason the Bible says that they baptize in the name of Jesus because Jesus has the same will that the Father has, and he has, you know, the same power and authority, so it's interchangeable. And when we petition him, most people I know, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, and all that, when they pray, they may start in, in our Father or Father God or something of that nature. And most of them that I've ever have ever seen in a prayer, they say, in the name of Jesus. Why? Because he said, you ask anything in my name. Why is it that I've never seen anybody in the prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? a petitioning thing from God in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, because the Bible says in my name. Now, they're interchangeable because it just means in the will of, in the power or the authority of, why aren't people doing that? 